to order the 19th meeting of the 2013-2014 Common Council year. Please stand and join me. You know, first of all, we want to ask our, uh, our clerk to read the quote for the day. Sit down. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Every story has an end, but in life, every end is a new beginning. Thank you. And now, can we please call the roll? Get everybody excited here. You didn't tell me to sit back down. First time, Mayor. <coughs> I hit it. It's the second time, though. Now look at you. I did. I hit it. Eleven present. Thank you. Now you can please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is the approval of uh, minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to uh, approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Are there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven ayes. Thank you. Uh, motion passes. There's no council appointments to deal with tonight, but we do have a council resignation. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a letter to the mayor from uh, Daniel Nevers, excuse me, Damian Nevers, who's uh, currently on the Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force, advising that he needs to resign <laughs> as he's taken a position in Green Bay, uh, but he's still going to reside within the city, but he's not going to be able to make the daytime meetings. Thank you. Um, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to uh, accept and place on file. Second. The motion to accept and place on file. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. Uh, yes, we have two this evening. First on the list is Colin Catchell. Colin, can I get your home address, please? Uh, 321 Bluff Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> on December 13th, an article in the Sheboygan Press was written about the spaceport moving to the South Pier with a large question mark for what might be in store for the future of the Sheboygan Armory. The comments from the individuals that were interviewed range from hopeful to demolition. Tonight, I would like to formally say that a committed group of passionate citizens has been forming that would like to preserve and provide future events for the city of Sheboygan and all its visitors at the Sheboygan Armory. To demolish a building that has so much potential in history and so many positive memories for the citizens of Sheboygan would seem to be committing an act of treason towards this community. The armory is a neutral place that seems to have no enemies or political connotations, and it has a high respect that spans from the GI generation to millennials. In the movie, The Field of Dreams, the lead character, Ray, is told that if he builds the field, they will come. Well, the armory is already here, and what it needs is new energies and new ideas, and I think, and I believe, people will come. The armory was a WPA project along with the courthouse. It was built during a, during a recession to revitalize our city and needs to be reutilized again during this long recession that we have been in since 2008. Currently, armories across the country are being restored and revitalized by concerned citizens of their communities. Almost none of these armories have arena seating. Our armory is very unique in this aspect. It also is the oldest NBA stadium in the United States and is the first place where the Harlem Globetrotters had their summer training camp in the 1940s. Our armory can be preserved and improved by loyal members and volunteers of this community, and there's no reason that national sporting and entertainment venues could not take place there. Imagine if 1,000, 2,000, or even 5,000 people showed up to a venue or event in our downtown. Think of the economic impact that would have on the South Pier District and our downtown businesses. A group called the Armory Foundation is online at thearmoryfoundation.com and is also on Facebook as the Sheboygan Armory. The vision of the Armory Foundation is that the Armory is a financial asset to our downtown, 
our tourism, and our citizens because it has been an icon of this city since 1941. It is an historical WPA asset that we cannot afford to lose. It will pay for itself for generations to come, both financially and culturally. The mission is to preserve, improve, and provide enjoyment in a historical setting for the future benefit of all citizens of Sheboygan and visitors. If you think about it with your heart and your pocketbook, preserving and utilizing the armory for future generations of Sheboygan could only be a win-win situation for everyone in this room. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. And next on the list would be Kirk O'Bear. And Kirk, could you please give me your home address? 735 Fairway Drive. Okay, you will have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Catchell, who's a teacher here in Sheboygan, and myself, I'm an attorney. Uh, we have started this Armory Foundation as an exploratory process to find out what kind of community support we have just to deliver the message to you all, Your Honor, and as well as uh, everybody here, that we think we have enough community support to uh, launch a viable al alternative either to the destruction or sale of this property. Uh, based on the amount of interest that we've been able to generate so far, we would like to um, reach out as a point of contact before other discussions occur, just to know that there are a significant number of people in the city that are interested in donating time, volunteer efforts, and contributing to uh, the foundation that we're anticipating uh, getting underway here. Um, as Mr. Catchell very eloquently stated, uh, this is a building that has tremendous history. It's really a one-of-a-kind building. We've been looking at other armories throughout the country that have had a similar uh, type situation as we have here, and there's been revitalization efforts that have been very successful and have been integral to parts of uh, those downtown revitalization efforts in other places like Duluth, and uh, I know there's a few other cities that we've been looking at as well, that successfully rejuvenated a building such as ours that we have here. Um, so I know that this is something that the committee is very interested in exploring in the very near future. We hear rumors about ideas that are out there that include the possible sale or destruction of the property, but uh, we just wanted to put our name in the hat that we are a group of people that are interested in providing support, help, and hopefully working out a win-win scenario whereby uh, we're not interested in costing the city anything but providing uh, community support for something that we view as an incredible asset that we'd all hate to see go to waste. So um, I think you know how to get a hold of me, but you have my address. <laughs> and uh, But if there are further discussions about uh, uh, how we could be utilized as part of a community effort to preserve this property, revitalize it, restore it, and expand its possible uses, um, we're here and ready to talk, and I, I'd appreciate any such opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. <coughs> Next, we'll go on to uh, Mayor's announcements. Uh, just want to remind everybody that the Department of Public Works will begin curbside pickup of Christmas trees starting next week, Monday. Um, all pet licenses will now be sold at the Sheboygan Police Department rather than City Hall. They're at 1315 North 23rd Street. And we have several neighborhood meetings <coughs> slated in the next uh, week or so. Erie Hill neighborhood will be meeting Saturday the 11th at 1230 and they'll be meeting at the Mexican restaurant on 15th and St. Clair. The Ellis Historic Neighborhood will be meeting Saturday the 11th also at 10 a.m. at St. Luke's United Methodist Church. And the Gateway Neighborhood will meet Thursday, January 16th at 5.30 at St. Nicholas Office Complex Center. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and to file all, all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions. Second. The motion on the <coughs> consent agenda is before us. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I had asked that we pull 2-3 um, for a separate vote. Thank you. 2-3 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger, Bourne, Carlson, Dassler, Donahue, Hammond, Heidemann, Herman, Lassard, Lewandowski, Matichek, Pentico, Thiel, Van Akron, and Vanderweel and Versi, commemorating the distinguished service of Dennett's Tetchlog to the city of Sheboygan. Would the clerk please read the resolution? I'd be happy to. A resolution commemorating the distinguished service of Dennis G. Tetschlag to the city of Sheboygan. Whereas Dennis G. Tetschlag served the citizens of the city of Sheboygan as an alderperson 
from the 4th District for 25 years from 1969 to 1970 and 73 to 1997 and served as Com Common Council Vice President and Council for Council Year 1993 through 1994 and as Council President for Council Year 94 through 95 and whereas during his tenure as Alderperson, Mr. Tetchlog served as a valuable member of numerous com council committees, including Public Protection and Safety, Public Works, General Sewer Committee, Health and Welfare, Judiciary and Legislative, Public Streets, Salaries and Grievances, Industrial Development Commission, and the Special Metropolitan Sewer District and Wastewater Treatment Plan Study Committee, serving as chairman of many of them for multiple years. And whereas, Mr. Tetchlog also was a member of the Redevelopment Authority for the City of Sheboygan for 18 years, serving as chairperson from 1983 to 1997. And whereas, Mr. Tetchlog also served as a member of the Sheboygan Transit Commission from 1991 to 1997. And whereas, Dennis G. Tetchlog passed away on Tuesday, December 17, 2013. And whereas Mr. Tetchlog served his constituents in the city of Sheboygan faithfully and honorably, being a man of outstanding ability and integrity. And whereas Mr. Tetchlog will always be remembered as exemplifying the best qualities of leadership and public service to the city. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council hereby commemorates the distinguished service rendered by Mr. Dennis G. Tetzschlag to the city of Sheboygan throughout his 25 years of service expresses its sorrow in his passing and offers to his wife Orva and his entire family its deepest sympathy. Be it further resolved that this resolution be published in this council's official proceedings and that a suitable copy be presented to the family of Dennis G. Tetchlog. Alderman Hammond. Mr. Mayor, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put the resolution upon its passage. Uh, for, we're going to do a voice vote on this. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, I will now present this to uh, Dennis's widow, Orva, who is with us, and the rest of the Tetchlag family. Moving on then, the rest of the consent agenda is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Eleven ayes. Motion passes. We'll go on to reports of officers. Uh, items 3.1 and 3.2 will lie over. Items 3.3 through 3.9 will be referred to various committees. And then under resolutions, item 4.1 will lie over. And 4.2 through 4.4 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, we have item 5.1, which is an RC by law and licensing, recommending denying the beverage operator's license 0134 based on his failure to accurately reveal all the convictions on his application, <laughs> his record of violations related to the license activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the RC under discussion. Is Alderman Joshua Vanderbilt. Neumeyer here this evening? He is not here. Um, we invited him to our meeting on three different occasions, and he did not show up at either at either of the meetings, um, including I've reached him out, reached out to him through phone calls, and he never showed up. Any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Eleven ayes. Motion passes. 
Next is matters laid over. Item 6.1 is an RO number 205 of 1314 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a communication from John Johnston of Johnston's Bakery in regards to his interest in purchasing an additional 2.7 acres parcel and land uh, in the Sheboygan Business Center for building expansions. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any questions on the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 11 ayes. Motion passes. Next is item 6.2, which is an RO number 206 of 1314 by Board of Contractors Examiners submitting applications for building contractor licenses already granted. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. It's moved and, se and seconded to accept and file the RO under discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 11 ayes. Motion passes. Next is item 6.3, resolution 108 of 1314 by Alderperson Hammond accepting an offer to purchase from fifth generation properties for a 2.65 acre parcel formerly known as the LTC property in the Sheboygan Business Center. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I uh, move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, I'd like to uh, call on city planner Chad Pelichek for some information. Thank you. You'll recall at the last council meeting in closed session, we had a discussion about um, the right of first refusal on some properties uh, adjacent to the parcel that the Schmitz are proposing to purchase for expansion. Uh, this afternoon, we received an accepted offer. I'm accepting our offer back to them. Uh, basically that they're going to purchase the 2.65 acre parcel and then accept the two-year right of first refusal on those adjacent parcels. Um, and that's different than the normal, the first uh, document that came in had a three-year. The council accepted the two-year. We went back to them. They accepted that. So the agreement that will be signed under this document, it calls for a uh, selling of the 2.65 acre parcel and then the right of first refusal on the uh, two adjacent parcels for two years. Any further dis questions or discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 11 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to item 6.4, resolution number 109 of 1314 by Alderperson Hammond authorizing the sale of approximately 2.7 acres of land in the Sheboygan Business Center to Johnson's Bakery. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The resolution is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Next is a plan closed session. Alderman Hammond. Oh. Uh, other matters? City Attorney, we have one item. Uh, 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing. Now, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, make a motion to convene in closed session of the exemption provided in sec uh, section 19.851E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating regarding the possible sale of land in the business center where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Moved and seconded to go into closed session. Clerk, please call the roll. 11 ayes. We'll stand in uh, uh, for a short recess of five minutes and we'll uh, reconvene in closed session. <laughs> 